Hello everyone, this is Dr. Nishana Jumuteen, Senior Faculty Economy at Akam IAS Academy. Having done my PhD in Economics, I have been teaching, training and mentoring lakhs of aspirants across India for the past 10 years. I have been teaching in places like Delhi, Chennai, Bangalore and at Hyderabad, I teach only at Akam IAS Academy. So today, we have come up with an exclusive free series for all the serious UPSC CSE aspirants called as Master Your Indian Economy Through Key Concepts. So in this particular series of sessions, most important key economic concepts with the proper simplification of them will be done in a crystal clear manner. The objective of this particular series is to make sure that if any aspirant or any student is feeling that economics as a subject is challenging or it is fearing you, get ready to learn it in the most simplified way with me. I'll make sure that all the difficult concepts which you think are highly technical are at your fingertips. So now in this particular session, a series of topics will be covered part wise and not more than 10 minutes will take for each of the concepts. So now, to begin with, the very first topic of discussion is national income and its indicator, which is GDP, Gross Domestic Product. So now, before going into the topic, don't forget to subscribe the YouTube channel. Why? Because for you to get updates regarding the upcoming classes, it will be easier as well. So now, having said that, what is national income? In simple terms, the total income of a country is called as national income. In India, we have three sectors of an economy. What are they? Primary sector, secondary sector and tertiary sector. The income that is collected or the income that is generated from all these three sectors gives your total income and that is called as national income in the most simplified manner. And now, Having said that, this national income, it is defined as the total output or let's say the value of all final goods and services produced by a country during one particular period of time, that is one year. This national income is very important to understand what is the total income a country produces or a country has. Now, there are four most important indicators of national income. Out of that, the most important indicator is GDP, that is gross domestic product. Apart from GDP, the other indicators of national income consist of GNP, gross national product, net domestic product and net national product. But in today's class, we'll be focusing on what is gross domestic product in simple term. So now, gross means total, right? Domestic means within the country and products means goods. What goods? The final goods. There is something called as final good and intermediate goods. Now, for example, I want to produce a cotton sari. Now, the raw material for the cotton sari is cotton. I have to undergo or let's say this particular process to make a cotton sari, you need dyeing of cotton and then you have to do certain other process to get the final output. So now when the cotton raw material is been converted to all the process of dyeing, weaving, all these things, it is a semi-finished good. So that is called as intermediate good. Whereas once the entire production is done and the product is available for sale in the market with the so-called MRP. Now, that is called as the final product. So, final goods are those goods that are available for use or final consumption by the consumers. So, now in the product or let's say in GDP, we take into consideration only the value of final goods and services. So, now, before going to the definition of what is gross domestic product, in a very simplified manner, I would tell you that gross domestic product is nothing but the total output of the country. 
what is produced in the country from all the three sectors that is your primary secondary and tertiary sector having said that let's take a example now let's say for example you are working in the primary sector and your output by producing tomato potato onions etc is rupees 50 you are getting rupees 50 from the primary sector now using these tomato potato onions from the primary sector as a raw material for the secondary sector you are producing tomato ketchup onion pakoras or let's say potato chips so now when you produce these commodities in the secondary sector or industrial sector the total output becomes 100 rupees now having said that once the production is done this product has to reach the market your tomato ketchups or onion pakoras or potato chips or whatever you need what transport communication wholesalers retailers etc because those activities come under what tertiary sector or service sector so now the total output from the third sector will be 150 rupees so now in simple terms what is gdp p plus s plus t which is 50 plus 100 plus 150 so now 300 rupees will be the gdp in simple terms that is why i told you that the contribution from all the three sectors or let's say the total output from all the three sectors is called as gross domestic product now i will tell you the definition of gdp it is defined as the total value or let's say the final value of all goods and services that is produced within the domestic territory of a country for a period of one year irrespective of nationality in simple terms gdp takes into consideration only the value of final goods and services whatever commodities you are ready for sale in the market from all the three sectors primary secondary tertiary and now the next condition is that it has to be produced within the geographical boundary or location which means for example if it is india's gdp all the production that happens that within our country india that only will be taken into consideration for india's gdp that is the meaning of domestic territory or geographical location or within the boundary and now every year we calculate gdp the calculation is yearly or annual basis and now the fourth point is irrespective of nationality which means that no matter a foreigner is staying in our country india and he or she is contributing to the economic production process of our country then their contribution is also taken into consideration for india's gdp you will think that what about the Indian citizens who are NRIs? For example, I am staying in India and I am producing or let's say I am working in any sector in India. I am a citizen of India. So obviously my contribution is taken into consideration. Now, if I am an NRI, non-residential Indian, somebody who is a citizen of India but working in, in another country, like Japan, US, Australia, etc. Now, though I am an Indian citizen also, if I am working in a foreign country, then my contribution will not be taken into consideration for calculating India's GDP. Why? Because the definition tells you that only those activities which are done within the domestic territory or geographical boundary will be taken into consideration. That is the reason. Whereas the foreign citizens or the foreign nationals who are within our country India, even though they are not citizens also, their contribution will be taken into consideration for India's GDP. That is what the definition tells us. Is it clear? Having said that, another important point about GDP is that I told you value of all final goods and service which means whatever you produce in your country is considered but this is a concept an economic concept so there are certain activities that are excluded in the calculation of gdp such as illegal activities 
Like if you see gambling, smuggling, all these activities are actually excluded. Then murder for hire. Let's say for example, I'm telling somebody, hey, I'll give you 50,000 rupees. Go and cut somebody's head. Can I say that? Oh my God, I will not say that. I just made an example. Now these are unaccountable and these are activities which cannot be considered in the calculation of in, in, in India's GDP. So illegal activities like gambling, smuggling, murder for hire, sale of drugs, illicit or illegal drugs, all these are excluded in GDP calculation. At the same time, secondhand commodities. What are secondhand goods? Secondhand goods means used commodities, right? For example, I have purchased a car worth 40 lakhs in the year 2023. And in 2024, that is current year, I want to sell this car. Can I sell for 40 lakhs rupees? No, it has to be 20 lakhs rupees, for example. Why? Because the value of this particular car has depreciated or come down, right? So now, once this car was produced in the year 2023, 40 lakhs was the cost. The price of that is already included in what? In the national income or let's say GDP. You will not repeat it once again in the next year because it will lead to something called as double counting, which will again make the value unsatisfactory in the context of GDP calculation. So that is the reason we will not include what the value of the car in the next year also because it is a used commodity. Now, if I want to sell this car, definitely I need to have an agent, physical or online or whatever. So now there is something called as commission charges or brokerage fees, which I have to pay. So now second hand goods or used products are excluded from the calculation of India's GDP, but brokerage fees, commission charges and after sales services, all these are included in the calculation of what India's GDP. So apart from that, another important point to be noted here is gifts and grants. Gifts and grants are also excluded in the calculation of India's GDP. Here, gifts and grants means not the gift that you give to your friend. You may buy a costly 1 lakh laptop or 1 lakh iPhone and you're giving it to your friend. It is not that context. The gifts and grants that India receives from other country, the government receives from other country, all those are excluded from the calculation of India's GDP. Now, service of households such as domestic help, maid, etc., servants, etc. Though they are paid also, they are not included in the calculation of GDP. Why? Because these activities do not contribute in the economic production of a country. They are not generating any source of income or let's say they are not a part of the production process. That is why these activities are excluded from the calculation of GDP. But there are some exceptions. Now, as for the definition, I told you within the domestic territory, right? But then Indian embassies, which are in abroad, Indian embassies cannot be within a country, India. They have to be in some other foreign country and then they, have, they are working for us. So now Indian embassies and shipping operations by Indian companies in a foreign country or abroad are included in the calculation of what India's GDP. That is an exception. Though they are not within the domestic territory also, Indian embassies and shipping operations by Indian companies are contributing to what India's economic production process. That is why we include them in the concept called as GDP. This is a very, very important point for the prelims examination. Out of the following items, which are included, which are excluded, you should know it. A simple but yet tricky question for the prelims examination. So this is what you should know with regard to the concept gross domestic product in the most simplified manner. I hope if anybody was having a fear in GDP, now the fear is gone. Do not get confused with all the formulas or technical jargons in textbook students. Keep it as simple as that. 
because UPSC requires the concept understanding in depth with a simplified manner. Now, having said that, the formula for calculating GDP goes like this. GDP is equal to C plus I plus G plus X minus M, which is consumption plus expend investment plus expenditure. What expenditure? Government expenditure plus ex including export minus imports. So this is how you will calculate GDP. And now, if you see with regard to our country, India, we rank number five in the entire world economy today as per 2024 data in terms of GDP. Previously, India was in the sixth position, 2023 time, and UK was in the fifth position. Because of the recession, what is recession? Slowing down of economic activities. Because of that, UK came down to six and India went to fifth. Anyways, India is doing pretty much better in the GDP progression. Now, according to economic survey, it is also predicted that by 2025, India is supposed to become a US dollar 5 trillion economy by the year 2025. But the after effects of COVID-19 pandemic will not enable us to become a US dollar 5 trillion economy by 2025. So then IMF, International Monetary Fund said that let us push it to another two more years. So they said that by 2027, they will try to achieve this target. And then they also said that by 2032, India will try to become or India must become a US dollar 10 trillion economy. So these are the current affairs updates of GDP as a whole. So stay tuned for more such videos. And in the next video, I'll come up with the connected topic of national income indicator. Thank you and Jai Hind.